of helping to get all of those things set up on Sunday mornings, um, please, please let us know in the church office. Um, there are also different ways to volunteer on some of the banners that we have, um, the mission, worship, places like that. Um, there's, there's little things that you can kind of pull off on that that are little people um, that, that you can kind of remind yourself that this is what I wanted to sign up and be a part of. Um, the Martha Project is going to be something else we're going to be doing. Um, it's going to be an idea of just trying to get families together doing things together, not just in our church, but in the whole community. Um, that's going to be done at a number of different churches. Our church is sponsoring one of the nights. It's going to be J July 19th, and um, it's going to be a spaghetti meal and family activities. The event will run from somebody who would like to volunteer to help prepare the meal. If you're interested, please let us know. Also on July 17th, from 8 in the morning until noon, we're going to have a, this is the way they wrote it for me, fun-filled day of beautification around the church. I think that's also known as a work day, right? So um, if you would like to be a part of that, please, that's um, important for us too. Um, no property committee meeting on Monday because the office is going to be closed in commemorance of the 4th of July weekend, but the ice cream, social, and car show, 70th annual one of those, is going to be coming up on August 4th this year. The proceeds are going to be assisting Deanna Tout with her medical expenses. For those of you who don't know, she's been diagnosed with lung cancer. And so, anyway, other announcements are listed in your bulletins. They're listed in the um, newsletters, sometimes on the Facebook page or on our website as well. Um, would the congregation please stand? Peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share that peace with those who are here. I'm going to come down. I'm going to shake your hand, too, just because you're so enthusiastic about that. There we go. All right. Our worship continues with the order for confession and forgiveness as followed from the front page of your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The opening hymn is hymn number 887.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave to the apostles that we faithfully witness to your love and your peace in every circumstance of life in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Wonderful. I'm here. Thank you. I just have to come from the back. That's great. Thank you. Our first reading is from Second Chronicles chapter seven, verses eleven through sixteen. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, all that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord and in his own house he successfully accomplished. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. Our psalm today is Psalm 33 verses 12 through 22. 
Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth, he who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Our second lesson is from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy lands without anger or argument. Here ends our readings. The Gospel reading for us today may be followed from the Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life or what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and drink? on your body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor do they reap nor do they gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing. The hymn is number 891. Save the 
please be seated. This is an amazing place. I'm filled with filled with incredible people. And before you guys get too big ahead, I'm talking about you, but I'm not just talking about you. Over, over the years, I have been blessed to travel this country that we call the United States of America, this country that we call home. And I have seen the grandeur of the Rocky Mountains and the barren beauty of the Southwest deserts. Just recently, while on vacation, we drove to see both of my sons. The road trip took me through Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois, the heartland of America. And I saw the cornfields and the bean fields growing, and I saw the cattle and a couple of pig farms. which all will help to feed and fuel us. The trip took me through the hills of Kentucky and Tennessee, and if you haven't been there, they are incredible. From there, we went through the mountains of North Carolina, where we hiked, we went to the coastline of the Atlantic Ocean, where we rose before dawn so that we could catch the sunrise over the water. And in the evening, we watched the Olympic trials with people from all across this country competing to have the chance to represent this incredibly diverse and incredibly gorgeous country. In all of this, I was reminded of all of the remarkable people I have met in different places that I have lived or visited. Some of them spoke with a distinctly southern accent, y'all. Some of whom had our Midwest dialect. Some who on the East Coast, well, you know, the ones back there. I remember the streets of Chicago growing up and some of the people there were people who are north of here who sound just a little bit different when they say things like boat or coat. Don't you know? They were red and yellow and black and white and all of them were precious in God's sight. And I thought about all of these things and then I listened to the news and all of the fighting, and all of the bickering, and all of the partisanship, and I decided I didn't want to talk about that at all. Not this weekend. Instead, I want you to know how much I love this country. From the tundra of Alaska, to the rainforest of the Washington State Peninsula, to the deserts of the Southwest, and how much I love all of the people. Some who are very different from me in the way they look, and some who are very different from me in their ideology. But all of them Americans. And I remember growing up in a military town with people who would frequently have to be stationed or deployed to different places in the world, some of which were not very safe. And if you listen to them talk, they said it didn't matter if you were black or white. It didn't matter if you were Republican or Democrat. All that mattered, they told me, was that the person in the foxhole next to you was American. You know, we have our artists and our writers and our entrepreneurs and our workers. We have our farmers and people who have figured out how to make a living on the internet. How do you do that? We have our builders and designers. We have our loggers and our news reporters. We have our salespeople and folks who work in the service industry, pastors and politicians, and so many other occupations. I can't even begin to scratch the surface. Vacations are great, especially when you get to drive across this country and see the difference in landscape and meet the diversity in people and refocus yourself a little bit as a result of that. This is what I thought about a couple of times as we drove for hours and hours and hours. This is what I thought. I love this country. 
and I love its people. And because I love them, I want them to know Jesus. Because I want them to know love. I want them to know peace. I want them to know hope. I want them to know forgiveness. And I want them to know the promise of eternal life. It was then that I decided what I was going to preach on this 4th of July weekend. And these were the texts, and I'll show you why I chose them. 1 Timothy chapter 2. St. Paul writes, I urge you then... That supplications and prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and for all who are in high positions, so that we may live, we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right, and this is acceptable in the sight of God. So here's the question. How much do we act, at time do we actually spend in prayer and thanksgiving for our leaders, or how much time do we spend in criticism and partisanship? Just a question. Psalm 33. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Actually, one of my favorite ones. My dad loved singing the song. Happy, 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 happy. Happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. He who fashioned the heart of them all and observes all their deeds. A, a king is not saved by his great army. Warriors are not delivered by their great strength. A war horse is a vain hope for victory. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. So here's the question. In what do we place our hope, trust, in faith? People? Human-created institutions? Or in the divine and the internal and his statutes and principles? Matthew chapter 6. Don't worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Question. How much time do we spend seeking God's kingdom and the things that he thinks are right? You know, not just faithfulness, but included in that would be things like family, community, neighborliness. Or do we spend that time in worry? or greed. And finally, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. God tells Solomon, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. So question. How are you doing with humility? Or does that pride thing seem to get in the way? I was thinking about those things as I was driving. And then it dawned on me, you know, 244 years ago. If, if you're trying to do the math on that, it won't get you back to 1619. And it won't get you back to 1776. It'll get you back to 1787. Which was the constituting convention. A bunch of guys gathered from May through September in the Pennsylvania State House in Philadelphia wearing ridiculous wigs and clothes that were way too hot given the fact that there was no air conditioning. And the purpose was to put together a nation, a country. Incidentally, one that I happened to love. It was good. It wasn't perfect. I think our job, however, is not to tear them down, but to build on their foundation. How is it that we say that? To make it more perfect than it was before. And in my travels and in my acquaintances, I think I've discovered that there might be a key to this. It kind of becomes a biblical theme. 
that if we really want to make this place more perfect, the key to it is love. That entails listening and understanding and compromise, but mostly from a God who calls himself love, it requires love of us with each other. Because it really is an amazing country filled with incredible people. Happy Fourth of July. I want to invite you to stand as we sing the next hymn. Let us join in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not me, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we pray. I will end each prayer petition with the words, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond with the words. 
hear our prayer. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith, that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy. God of the heavens, your creating spirit animates the universe. We give you thanks for the moon and stars, the planets and galaxies, and for all the mysteries of the world that remain yet unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy. God of freedom. You have liberated us from sin and death and rescued us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery or corruption. Direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness, Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we give you thanks for the examples of love and commitment of those celebrating special anniversaries in our congregation. For Dennis and Nova Flea Hardy, 50 years. Jim and Barb Kerr, 50 years. Randy and Beth Coyle, 25 years. And John and Kim Story, 25 years. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion. You became vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ in solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint, give courage to those who fear, and bring wholeness to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for outreach ministries. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks, Almighty God, that in every time and in every place you call for prophets who move us towards freedom. Thank you for all of those, for those present today and for those in our past who strive for liberty for all. Thank you for this land in which we live. Lord, in your mercy. We lift all our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The congregation may be seated as the offering is received.
us pray. Blessed are you, God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and all that we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day, Sunday, overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread or drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray as Christ has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I would invite the congregation to be seated. Those helping with communion may come forward. Otherwise, please follow the instruction of the ushers.
congregation may rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The canticle is number 206. Thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. For our final uh, hymn, it's printed on our out, or on your insert. Um, I'm going to sing the verse and then everybody can join in together on the chorus. Swear allegiance to the land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn prayer. and serve the Lord.